Today on Let's Play Bedrock, I am going to build a sugarcane farm inside a crashed hot air balloon. And then I'm going to conquer the end. Speaking of the end, stay tuned all the way to the end of this video as I will be revealing the next themed area we are starting in the next episode. To kick off today's episode, I am doing a little bit of fishing, and the one thing in particular that I'm looking for is an enchanted book with Unbreaking 3. If we can find a mending book as well, that'd be great, but I'm gonna stop as soon as we get Unbreaking 3, because we have that mending villager over there. And I just don't want to fish too long, because you all know what happened last time I went fishing, right? I got blown up by a creeper right there. Not today. And after maybe 20 minutes of fishing, we got an Unbreaking 3 book. I'm not mad about that rate, especially this early game. I've already got my Unbreaking 3 book and I could really use some more mending books because later today in this episode we're gonna go visit the end. I really don't want to spend a whole lot of time messing around with this villager because look at this it's so expensive 32 uh. emeralds for one mending book. So what I'm gonna do is maximize my time and effort and we're gonna go ahead and craft five golden apples, one brewing stand, one fermented spider eye, and about halfway through preparing to find a best friend for my villager I realized I forgot forgot a few things at camp. And on my way back through the jungle, a one in a million thing happened. Ow! I think I just got struck by lightning. I think it just hit that lightning rod right when I was walking past. That hurt so bad. I think my hair's standing up straight. Do I still have hair? And as much as I want to sleep right now, we need to keep it nighttime so we can try to find a zombie. I see a couple right there, but I'm not ready for you yet. Just stay put. We got to sneak you in here past the security guard. Just hang on. Now, where were we? Brewing stand, water bottle, fermented spider eye, and some blaze powder. And that will get us a potion of weakness, which I am going to go ahead and put right here in this cauldron, into which I'm going to dip my arrows. And now we have five arrows of weakness. We can take one potion and use them on our villager friend here once he is zombified. There's somebody out there waiting for me. Oh man, I forgot one more thing. I got to get rid of this bow. I need just a plain bow with no enchantments on it. Ow! <laughs> Hey, you're not the one. I'm not ready for you. That hurt. Hey, can I have your bow? Really? Can I have your gunpowder? Thank you. At least you're cooperative. There we go. And you know what? Let's go ahead and get a boat. As long as I don't leave the area, we should be fine. But I don't have a name tag for this guy right now. There we go. And he's gonna instantly go hang out with his new buddy, Mr. Villager. Uh, now Mr. Zombie Villager. Oh my. We almost killed our Mending Villager. Um... Let's let us let us be safe about this, shall we? I'm gonna take my bow and one of the arrows of weakness. We're not gonna fully charge the bow. Just gonna we're just gonna tap him a little. And boom! Discount number one is underway. We do that four more times and we're golden. After a little more consideration, the zombie and the villager, they're not the best of friends. But the villager is very grateful that I returned him to his original state, and he's granted me with one cost trades all across the board. Excuse me, sir. I'll take all the mending books, please. Yes. Ooh, unbreaking one. We could easily combine three of those for unbreaking three. That'll at least get us situated for a little while. Hey, I like you more and more every day, buddy. And as much fun as that was, it's time to stop goofing around with villagers and get started on my hot air balloon sugarcane farm. Before I can start building my balloon, I'm going to build the sugarcane farm and collection systems. The sugarcane farm is going to start right on this block right here. That's where our sugarcane is going to go. And directly behind it, we're going to place some water right there. And because that's overflowing everywhere, we're going to go ahead and box it in. I'm going to put one block back here behind the water source, followed by a dispenser facing toward the grass block. Then I'm going to go ahead and break that block because it was supposed to be a temporary block. Then very carefully, I'm going to take an observer and it's going to face that direction so that the face is going that way. And then we will put another observer facing directly into that observer and you should start to hear it clicking. That means it's working. In order to deactivate this system, we're going to grab a sticky piston and face it directly into the side of that observer. Then I'm going to take one piece of wool and place it right here and I'm going to put a lever right on the side of that block. And whenever we flip the lever, it's going to extend that piston and move the observer out of the way so that it deactivates the observer clock. In order to break my sugar cane, I need a piston facing forward right here. And because this dispenser is not receiving power through
through a block, but directly from this observer as a proximity effect, it will also activate this piston. So look at this. This is minimal redstone and the whole thing is done. One more thing I want to add to the contraption is this right here, a hopper followed by a chest. That way we can preload a bunch of bone meal and this thing can run for a very long time. And you know what? I'll go ahead and turn it sideways and we'll get a double chest, even more bone meal. I don't have a ton of bone meal, so we're going to be very sparing in how much we test this right now, but I'll toss the one stack in there that we do have, and I'm going to place one sugar cane right there. That's all we need. This thing's ready to go. You ready? Here we go. Flip the lever and unlimited sugar cane. Look at it go. There's a couple things that we need to do to make this more efficient, and one of those things is a storage system. We also need to put some walls up here so that we don't have sugar cane landing on top of the piston like that. I did a little bit of work, and here's what we did. I've got a mine cart with a hopper placed directly underneath this block right here, just in case any sugar cane happens to land directly on top of this block. Check it out. It's just going to get sucked through into the hopper mine cart. And then I've got a hopper line running all the way over here where our collection system is going to be. And there's our sugar cane. Then anything that happens to land on the wool, it will be picked up by one of two water buckets placed right here or right here. Anything that lands in the water should flow down into this hopper and then on into the collection system. And from here, I can still activate the system and I can reach my chest to throw in my bone meal. I don't need to be anywhere near that farm to collect it manually because my hope is that I can just turn this on and leave it running until it runs out of bone meal. And then we can come over here and collect all of our stuff. So how are we going to collect it? I need to make an item elevator that goes up through that hole. So I'm going to take a dropper and place it upward facing right there. And then I'll take this hopper line that we've got coming from the sugarcane farm and we'll connect it up to the side of the dropper. It's a good thing we went to the nether last episode because we have soul sand to make bubble columns. We'll place the soul sand right here. Then out of the backside of the dropper, I'm gonna place a comparator, which will read whether or not there are any materials inside of that dropper. If there are, it will shoot them straight up through the water elevator. In order to make that happen, we'll take a redstone repeater and place it right here, followed by any random solid block of your choice. And then over here, we'll do redstone, redstone, and a repeater straight into a solid block and then redstone repeater and redstone right there and this thing should be fully functional so if I place anything in here it's gonna start spitting out the items the unfortunate problem right here is that it's spitting them out the side so we need to block off all four sides of the soul sand and that will force all of the items to go up the sugar cane is going to float up a bubble column straight up this hole and up here to where it's going to eventually land in a hopper so I'm gonna connect up hoppers to to the back of these chests like this. And because all of these hoppers are directly around this hole in the ground, it will contain all of the water except for right here, but that's going to be okay because we're going to put a little bit of a loop of hoppers around the top as well. I'm gonna start right here. Don't worry that it's facing down. We'll fix that in a second. We're just gonna go ahead and trace around in a circle just like this. From here, I'm gonna toss a water bucket right there and it should go all the way down to the bottom and hit that soul sand and it should flow right over here, but we don't have a bubble column yet, which then begs the question, does this river have any kelp? I don't think that it does. We gotta go find an ocean. Jackpot! Then what I need to do is jump down in here and temporarily break this soul sand, put some regular sand, and then we're gonna grow some kelp all the way to the top of the water column. And that will make every single water block a source block. Then we can break this right back out, replace our soul sand, and boom! <laughs> Did you see that? Whoa! That was fun. In theory, what should happen, as long as this works correctly, all of the sugar cane should travel through the hopper line, end up in this bubble column, into that hopper, and then into these chests. With this left open like this, we're probably gonna lose some sugar cane over the sides. What'd I tell you? That's okay, we got a plan. Many of you may not know that before arriving in the jungle, I was a successful traveling sugarcane salesman. I earned so many emeralds selling sugarcane that I decided to take a luxurious vacation. As I flew over the jungle in my private hot air balloon, I saw some ancient ruins. But while trying to get a closer look, one of the ropes holding the basket snagged a tree and ripped away from the balloon. I crash landed right here on the jungle floor and I've been stuck here ever since. I don't know for how long, but 
I guess this is my home now. Ooh, yeah. Would you look at that? I have seen hundreds of hot air balloons on YouTube, but I've never seen somebody crash their hot air balloon. Leave it up to the bird to not know how to fly well enough to keep that balloon in the air. And I'm six episodes in and I finally got my Blue Jay logo somewhere in the world. I'm sure we'll hide it other places as well, but that's a perfect place for it. I told you I had a plan to keep the items from flying all over the place. They will actually go directly underneath that campfire and they won't be able to escape, but they will still float over to the hopper. So we should have a completely lossless sugarcane farm. And I have just enough sugarcane to give it a small little test here. We're gonna have to get more of this stuff. I'm completely out. This is it. Here we go. Toss it in, flip the lever, and let's make sure that we are getting sugarcane drops in the first chest, which I believe should be this one right here. No, it's on the other side. I see it coming through. Look, there it is. Sugarcane, yes. And it's working. Yes. Oh, I'm so happy. Uh-oh. Oh, no. What if I just break that block out? It still works. <laughs> I'm sure that's fine. We'll leave it there. With my hot air balloon build being fully completed and considering that I've crashed it, I have no other form of transportation right now. So I'm going to prepare to go to the end and we're going to get an elytra before this episode is over. And while I'm preparing, I owe you guys a like challenge. In the previous video, we built this crazy cool piglin portal and I challenged 350 of you amazing people to like the previous video and you blew away the challenge. So in honor of our piglin portal we're gonna go punch a zombified piglin with no armor and no weapons if 350 people like this video i will do a loop from underneath the main end island and try to survive while wearing my brand new elytra which by the way we don't have yet but i will before this episode is done all i've got on me is a pickaxe and you know what i'm actually gonna take food i'm gonna allow myself food oh look 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 I told you I would punch the first one I saw. There are three of them here. We're gonna, oh my, there's four of them. Okay, here we go. Here goes nothing. Survive, survive. Oh, my, oh, okay. How long did that last? Three seconds? Are you still mad at me, friend? Are you? Hey, does this count? Can I do it here? I'm gonna take him down. One of you is gonna go down. Don't hit me with that sword. I'm telling you. Thank you. Challenge completed. Kind of. That was horrible. Give me my food and give me my pickaxe. Let that be a lesson to you. Trying to make my way over to a warped forest. I got into a little bit of trouble. That guy took me down. I managed to get all my stuff back except for my armor. Is there any way for him to get up here? Because I'm about to make him real mad. <laughs> Give me my armor back, bro. Thank you. Hi. Now that I've reclaimed my gear, I'm going to head to the end. And if you want to see a full explanation of the dragon fight, I've got videos already on the channel for that. And maybe we'll do an in-city raid on a stream one day here soon. But for today, I'm just going to show you the most exciting parts of my trip to the end. Let's go. Like you're trying to tell me something, Perry, and I just can't tell what it is. Whoa, oh, there he is. <laughs> Hi. 
Get lost. Okay, you just stay up there. Aside from a bunch of extra ender chests, we now have a ton of enchanted tools, most of which are probably gonna be a little bit useless, but we'll pick and choose what we can. And I got a bunch of ores, horse armor, and some other miscellaneous things. This right here is the real prize, shulker shells. We can make so many shulker boxes now. Honorable mention to all the random end blocks we got. Bunch of junk for now, but all right. Just like the tools, a bunch of armor that we may or may not use, but we'll keep for backups. And we have three pairs of elytra wings, two in the shulker box and one right here on this handsome looking dude. Ho, 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 did you see that? Oh, Blue Jay is the pro. Before we end off today's episode, I promised you at the very beginning, we would tell you what the next theme is gonna be. So for now, say goodbye to the jungle because we're not gonna be back here for a little while. We will be back eventually, but for now we're moving on to a place way over here about 1500 blocks away. And yes, 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 I know we're in another jungle. Don't worry about it, it's fine. What I'm more concerned about is this over here the dark oak forest and that over there over the course of time we are going to turn these couple of areas into a super mario themed land oh i cannot wait i've got some great plans already in store and i hope you're geeking out about it just as much as i am because this is going to be really fun so if you're ready for some super mario to come to minecraft go ahead and hit that like button subscribe click the bell to turn on notifications and we'll see you in the next one